And here's a man who wouldn't know what varicose veins were. He has the complexion of a 20-year-old. <laughs> Thank you, Peter Hitch, and say hello to Tracy. Oh, Tracy oh, Bartram, I haven't Peter. seen you for ages and ages. Didn't we squeal when we saw each other? Oh, there was a bit of squealing and mm. hugging and kissing oh. and, and catching up after many, many years' it's absence. It's been ages, yeah. It has, and I just heard before the last commercial, yes. was, I heard Tracy singing some notes, and I had forgotten that Tracy is indeed a wonderful singer and a oh, glorious yeah. performer oh, away from the radio you, waves you. and the, the stage and doing all that sort of stuff and then to discover you're also a movie star. I think oh, this is good. My Strange big part, bedfellow. my big yes. part in Strange Bedfellows, yeah. oh, no. Isn't that wonderful? But I do have a band. I've got Tracy Bartram and her man band. Oh, and then you. there's an asterisk at the bottom that says, except when girls are singing, and that would be me. That would be you. Yeah. Oh, what a singer you sing, are. But I, I sing pop songs with jazz musicians. What a singer you it's are. It's all on my website. Thank you so much, Peter And, Hinchner. and you've worked with, with Paul Hogan. Yes, and, love him. Uh, uh, he was good. I saw him, in uh, not in concert, but, you know... In, oh, did you see his stand-up show? I saw his stand-up show. Just here. recently? Just recently. How was Pranar. it? It was actually great, because it, it was a story that... Um, he told the story from his point of view about his about his life and his career, things that I didn't know about, although mm. I was at nine for, for many of the years. When but he, he was, was there. When he was there and coming down to Melbourne from Sydney and recording his uh, his sketch shows mm. and things he here. He was so funny. With Peter Fame and directing and I think probably Mike McCall-Jones writing the material. I'm yeah. sure Paul Jane. Hogan wrote a lot of it yeah, too. Yeah, I, I, I was asked to be in the Hogan shows occasionally. Oh, it was yeah. so much fun to oh, be in the sketches. How exciting. I didn't realise oh, that. Oh, yeah, you know. Philip did all of that stuff on the John Lane show. He was always yes. he was always something. Yeah, he yeah, was yeah. in a toga a lot. A bit I remember. Of, a bit, a bit of that. Bar Barry Crocker and Philip were always in togas. A, 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 a bit of a togas. jack of all trades. <laughs> now listen, I um, am so thrilled to have you in, and I just wanted to ask you, Peter, yes. do you ever go for a, a coffee in Ligon Street? Because according to your news tonight, the area has become a bit dead. Well, it's it's amazing. I I uh, I, I hadn't been in like on street for a coffee for a long time. Well, it's not yeah. on your way home. Well, it's not really on my way home. And of course, as you know, Tracy, and as you'll find out tonight, these days, Philip throws uh, cocoa, uh, a, a cocoa party for everyone yes. after the show. No togas, but, but cocoa. cocoa. And then his best shows. The, you know, highlights of his shows for about oh, six or seven hours. That's and, right. And you're free to go home. Well, I know, but I've been invited. He's when yes. he wants to take oh, you to McDonald's. Have a marvelous and then we've got to go and meet the puppy, and then we're going to yes. stay up all night watching uh, No, movies. but in the car on the way home, we have to have a replay of Nightline as well. Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. we can critique it. I mean, this it doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> uh, sadly, Ligon Street is out, as far as yeah. I'm concerned, yeah. because we have to go to Phillips. Although, sadly, tonight, I won't be able to I make know. it. You can make it. To... <laughs> yeah, you know my problem with Ligon Street, and I haven't been there for a long time. Mm. I really get irritated by all the spookers so who are I. standing outside the restaurant mm. with menus in their hand, mm. trying to drag but you in. But you know why? Mm. Because business is bad. No, but yeah. it's always been so. It's, I know. They've yes. been there for a long time. They have, yeah. actually. And, yeah. And, and it's 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 a great pity when people you know when any business is uh, is a bit on the back foot. We yes. you know we need everyone to do well, but and we need happened? businesses I mean, to expand. I think they've forgotten because I mean, look, we've been going to to Lycon Street for a long time, mm. long time. But I think you know, it seems that the village atmosphere of of Ligon Street has really changed, oh, yes. and you know it's. I mean, there's some shops like King and Godfrey, they've been there for, mm. forever and ever and ever, mm. and that's ma amazing. Yeah. But it seems that, that there doesn't seem to be that sort of little villagey thing. It's all very touristy. Do you know, when it, yes. do you know when it changed when they installed parking meters for the first yes, time? Yes, it did. It used to be I'm free to parking there. Yes. And you need a couple of hours to have a meal, don't you? Yes. And it's very yeah. hard. It's you hard can... to park in, around Carlton. Oh, it absolutely is, is they, hard they to park around And, and there's, no op there's no real um, method to fix it, because no. unless they're going to pull down houses, but yes. there's, it's, I think that's probably part of the reason why Carlton's not what it used to be yes. because you can't park anywhere. I park it's... underneath an over. Am I allowed to do that? Yeah, because you pay. Because there's a Safeway there as well. Yeah, yes. we all do, but it fills up. It's a very small car yeah, park. It's a yes. problem, isn't it? It certainly yeah. is. And one of the uh, proprietors of a, cafe, of a restaurant or cafe or one of the business people there was saying on the news tonight that something had to be done about the parking, yes. even if it was just to expand parking to two hours so that people had Can time to meal. actually have a meal. Be and because it's, you know, Carlton is one of the, the best residential areas in Melbourne. Oh, we yes. can just wander down the street. And, yes. and I think it's it's really hard for, you know, there's people who live there,
there and they've got their cars, but a lot of people don't have cars in Carlton. They, That's they, right. They use, Actually, you're quite right. So, it, you uh, know, Carlton, it, Fitzroy, that sort yeah. of yeah. runs And I really think that, mm. that some, you know, somewhere along the line, the the councils have got to really get behind small business because they're the lifeblood of Melbourne. Yeah, and, very and, much so. I hear, hear, agree yeah, totally and, with that. Even worse is Bridge Road, Richmond. Uh, Shocking. That's becoming a ghost town. It, it really yeah. is. It's and, terrible. And, you know, those direct factory outlets used to do so well. Yes. You know, up near. Um, it's the parking. Up near uh, Church Street and Lanark Street, but they've all disappeared. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you something terrible that happened when we were because um, the Intolerant Cooks is a new show I'm doing with Richard Barassi. Yes, and Peter. yes, and, I, I was um, reading about and it. I, and just I just a few days thank ago. you, and I just yes. want to mention Taking Shape because they they, they dressed me for the show, and yeah, it's, of course. it's a beautiful shop. And um, so one of the girls from Taking Shape and I went down. We were picking everything out. When we came out, her car was gone. What? It had been taken away. Oh, was she in a clear way? It, she was in a clear way and she was new to Melbourne oh. and it was absolutely terrible. We had to go and get her car mm. and pick it up from somewhere in Collingwood oh. and she didn't know. And look, but the thing is, it was it's a, you could shoot a cannon down Bridge Road, Richmond at any point mm. and, and it cost her a lot of money to get it back. And I, I just think, look, it's things are tough across the world. Do we have to be so militant about car parking? Can yes. we could we make life a little bit easier for shopkeepers? I, th I think you're right. And also shopkeepers are, are uh, battling against uh, the online shopping of uh, course. spree, which, oh, yeah, which a point. lot of people do. So it's harder and harder for them to make ends meet. Yes. Uh, and speaking of Bridge Road, I don't know if any of you... <laughs> Have noticed, but these the, there's a kind of a the, these odd tram stop things. They take up the half way. the road. They take up half the road, and you can either it looks like you can either go uh, left of it if you want to, or go up over it along the but tram you can't lines. Park. And you think, oh, I don't know what I'm meant to be doing here. I oh. hope I'm not going to get arrested or run over by a tram. It's and, terrible. And then you think, well, well, and where am I going to actually park now? Because yep. it seems to have taken mm -hmm. away and, some parking. And the minute along you're the way, late, you bang. The, Lock you know, out. That's right. Yes. That's right. And, for, and later on in the show, we're going to be talking about parking fines and how. A lot of them are not quite kosher. Oh, yeah, a bit later on in the show. Oh, yes. that's a very interesting topic, yes. isn't it? Yes, well, yeah, it sounds to... like you've got plenty on the agenda, so that's good. We have, but you're here. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, your lead story was very interesting to me because I yes. love trains. So do I. And, you uh, do love, love trains. I, was... I love trains. So does Grubby. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, he yes. Does. Grubby. Yes, yeah. I love yeah. trains. I love travelling on trains. It's Grubby has. I th he, I've seen photos of his collection. Haven't seen it in real life. Yeah. But it looks remarkable. And of course. Philip, I was thinking of you tonight oh, when you. Andrew Lund did our lead mm, story on yeah. the twin metro rail tunnels going under the Yarra. How interesting. Isn't it amazing? But my question is, do we need them? The trams run down St Kilda Road to the Domain Interchange. Well, do I, we need the I trains? Asked, um, I asked Andrew about it and he said, oh really, it's going to revolutionise our, uh, oh. our rail infrastructure okay. in Melbourne. Um, and that's a, I think that's a good thing because uh, m much and all as we all love driving our cars and things, the fact is rail and road, uh, rail and tram commuting uh. is really the way to go in a big city like ours. I agree with you, Peter Hitchner, but there's one thing that has never really been embraced in Melbourne and I would love to see it happen. What's that? Ferries along the Yarra. Yes, because here, here. when you look about, if you look at Sydney, mm. so many people catch a ferry to work, and yes. it's the most beautiful, idyllic way to yeah. get to work. The train system in Sydney is amazing because they've got double-decker trains. Yes, mm. but can you imagine catching the train, the, 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 a ferry. What a great idea! Down the Yarra, it's a dead river. Why yes. aren't we using? We it? used to yes. have them. There used to be a ferry that went to the Hawthorne Tea Gardens, which is now Leander. A regular, oh. a regular service used to go down that end of town. Because I, mean, I know we've got tourist um, ferries, I and mean, you can go out to Williamstown, and that's beautiful. Mm. But wouldn't it be? Uh, imagine what it would do to be able to just come into South Bank and go all the way out along the river, oh, and then come. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but more than that, we should have a fast cat to Frankston and so on. Shouldn't yes. we? we should be utilising Port Phillip Bay. And of course, there's been talk for about oh, a hundred thousand years now that there's going to be a ferry, a fast ferry service from Werribee South across to the city. And mm, I keep yes. hearing about this. Well, who's going to take a look? I, I I think seriously, Peter Hitchener for Prime Minister. Oh, there, I've said it. I've said it. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Oh, thank you, Tracy. Oh, no, I, no, I, you could be deputy. For no, I, I, I'd no, say I Tracy Bartram. No, I'd say Peter Hitchener, Governor General. Oh, oh <laughs> yes, because then we'd definitely but, be invited for tea. But, but wouldn't it be fun if you, if there were more services like this? Now, I don't yeah. know if there's an economic case for them or not. But there are a lot of people who live in the Point Cook, Werribee, Laverton, Hoppers Crossing, Werribee South area. Yes, and and uh, you know, for them, commuting. 
I mean, you listen to the traffic every morning. It's so painful. It so, must be so slow mm. getting yeah. over the Westgate. But if we had ferries, we'd be creating work. Yeah. We'd be, we'd be reducing clog on the roads. Yeah. We'd be utilising our fantastic we river would. system and helping businesses along the way. Yeah. And yet, you know, Peter showed these computer models of underground tunnels or something, mm. and they're eight years away or something. You wonder if they'll ever happen. Just as the East-West Link yes. was cancelled, yes. just as the plans for the Flinders Street station were cancelled, yes. you just wonder if any of these highfalutin ideas will ever proceed. In fact, I was talking to Andrew Lund again about that tonight for my Logie Award-deserving Periscope broadcast. If you haven't oh. seen it, you Missed out hugely, oh. but anyway, now we were periscope having, uh, broadcast. We were I'm just, writing this down. Oh, write it down. I tell you what, you love it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Viewing is not compulsory as yet, but it we're is working now. on that. It is. Uh, uh. But the thing is, uh, Andrew was saying that uh, that while this is not in the in the same league as the the very fast train <laughs> between Melbourne and and Brisbane and all mm. points in between, mm. which is you know probably never going to happen, this is something he believes that the the government, the current government, is so committed to that they will find. <laughs> The funding, because they're short of the funding. You're talking federal about, government now. Well, state government. Oh, state okay. government is very is very keen on on it, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's eleven billion dollars is the mm -hmm. kind of the price tag, and they don't have that much money yet. But it's a uh, lot of zeros. But, yes. Oh gosh, yes. But the thing uh, is, the uh, state opposition uh, is pretty much in favour of it, yeah. although they say, "Where's the money coming from?" But uh, Andrew seemed to think that it might. You know, it, this is something that might actually yeah. find its way to fruition because it would be such a good project, many, many jobs, and uh, something that the government, current government, is committed to. And you know, we haven't had a big project since the Snowy Mountain scheme in the 1950s, apart from CityLink. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty what big. What about Sydney? Think that was big enough? Yeah, wasn't it? I guess so. Okay, <laughs> but but uh, but but the thing is, I wish they get this. They get themselves sorted out at City Link seriously, because you know I keep getting fines. Oh. and and um, it, because and they're connected to one of my husbands who's not even anything to do with me anymore, and oh. I keep getting bills in his name. Just, oh. you know, so I'm a well, bit cross no with them. I know, shaking I, my fist I, angrily. I, oh yes, uh, and of course there is that uh, that odd occasion when you you're in morning peak hour traffic, and one of the lanes is closed, and you think, oh, yes. oh for heaven's sake, I know that this is all done to even out traffic flows, but couldn't we please we'll have all stop. the lanes operating? Yes. Oh. However, oh. I'm not complaining oh. because yes. it's great because I remember getting around before City Link. Oh, they, and I love the Western Ring Road. Yes. I really, do. I love yes. it. Yes. Hey, when you're not operating. You shouldn't be paying tolls, I believe. And some nights I go home through the domain tunnel yes. and it's down to 60 because of roadworks. Yes. I think the toll should be waived then. I think the toll should be waived full stop. I don't think I don't think it's in the Australian Constitution where we have to be charged to pay to be wow. on the roads. This is this is the <laughs> This is groundbreaking well, no, stuff. Well, later, oh, no. later on in the show, we're going to be talking to Mike Palmer from Know Your Rights Group. Wow. And he knows all about this stuff. Yeah, so he's well, coming up later on in the show. So if you want to know mean, about this stuff... Folks, we in. are leaving... Neil Mitchell for dead tonight. Oh, aren't we? absolutely. And, and this, Tom Elliott. This we is are. where the stories are being broken, uh, I tell you what. And Peter, we've broken all records. I'm sorry, you it's were very kind long enough time. to stay till 25 to 10. We've What's broken going on the record. The oh, wait. Oh, oh, look, what I'll what just there? give you shake hands like that, yeah, and, like that, that and, and that, that, and that, and call me. <gasps> Peter Hitchin from uh, the Logie award winning National Nine News. Bye.